Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to a completely new game engine. This is something that doesn't happen very often in the world of game development, but it happened today. We got a brand new AAA game engine available to us called Lumberyard, uh, made by Amazon. Now, when I say brand new, I'm kind of stretching the truth a little bit there with that expression because this is actually CryEngine, or essentially it's CryEngine uh, plus some custom tools by Double Helix, a company that Amazon bought a couple years ago and some whatever changes they've made in the last year. Now you see about a year ago, Crytek, the company that makes CryEngine, were in a lot of trouble, like not able to pay their employees in a lot of trouble. Then all of a sudden, Amazon showed up with a gigantic wad of cash and everything was good. And when I say gigantic wad of cash, we're talking either 50 or $70 million, depends on who you listen to. And we all kind of been wondering since where that money went. Well, Amazon's been getting into game development in a big way. As I mentioned earlier, they bought, um, Double Helix games. They bought a couple other. They've been poaching game developers, very high-end game developers. And of course, they've been launching more and more web services aimed at game developers. Now, Amazon web services are already used by several game developers, including Ubisoft and Rovio, uh, to host the, the server-side components of all of their games. And if you have never experienced it, Amazon makes some very great cloud computing offerings, such as EC2 or S3 for storage in the cloud, or EC2 being computing in the cloud. Now, uh, that is exactly their angle here with Lumberyard. Now, as I said, Lumberyard is a version of Crytek. That's basically what they bought. So that 50 or $70 million uh, gives us access to CryEngine. And CryEngine, uh, plus whatever changes they've made to it, uh, and full source code. Now, there's a catch. There's always some kind of a catch. But this is a completely free thing. There's no subscription. There's no revenue share. There's nothing like that. So um, right now, it is the best deal between uh, Unreal, Unity, and uh, Lumberyard, Lumberyard is by far and away the deal among those engines. But there is, of course, something in there, the way they're going to make their money. And that is, if you host your servers, the server component of your game has to be either hosted on your own servers or AWS. Uh, so basically in Amazon's cloud or in your own uh, actual server. You can't host in another virtual server. So you can't host your services in uh, Google Web Services, which don't support this anyways. Uh, Microsoft Windows as your services on Rackspace, etc. So the, your website either has to be done yourself or you use Amazon Web Services um, tiered price cloud-based services, which is already a pretty good deal and it's probably something you should consider anyways. So when we look at it together, that's actually a great deal. There's not a lot of strings attached. There's no weird revenue share in here. Uh, you can see the cost for using their servers upfront. They've even got a free tier. So basically you're just paying for usage, at least for the first year. Uh, so that is a that's the catch. That is where this will get you, but that is a very reasonable catch in my humble opinion. So I went ahead and I downloaded and I installed the package today. Now, another thing that's gonna turn some people off immediately, and if you're one of these people, you can stop watching now. If this is a big deal, this is Windows only. Uh, so right now, CryEngine only supports uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Uh, and then for targets, it supports um, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as well. Um, so. Of course, you're gonna need a developer license for either one of those from Sony and Microsoft, respectively. Uh, but no Mac, no Linux. So if you're one of those people right now, you are out of luck. The tools only run on Windows and you can only target Windows plus those platforms I mentioned. Now I'm assuming over time, they're gonna open up some more. I, I don't know if, I, if Crytek has a port for mobile. I don't think it does. Uh, so that's another limitation of going this route. So uh, without further ado, let's actually jump into what you get. Now you get, it's a, just a gigantic zip file to start you off. It's a 10 gigabyte install. Um, so I just simply downloaded it and extracted it out to the said folder. And then you run the launcher.bat. And this creates a basically a uh, configuration file. And to go through this, you're gonna need a couple things. First off, you're gonna need two accounts. You're gonna need an NVIDIA developer account and an Amazon developer account. And that's gonna be part of the installation. Then you go through and you basically just configure the software that's needed, uh, configure the SDKs that are needed, choose your plugins. Uh, so the various different tools you use, etc. And then you can either create a project here, which brings up this simple window. So either pick a multiplayer project, a samples project, or a new project, or we can just straight out launch the editor, which is what I'm gonna do now. Now I should point out, even though I'm gonna do a quick tour of the tools here, I am not really familiar with CryEngine. I haven't used it since years ago when they leaked my developer accounts and it kind of pissed me off and I stayed away. So I don't have a ton of experience on that level. So I'm mostly learning this as you guys are. Uh, here it is, welcome to your brand new world. Now, 
There is a link here for your getting started, guys. Unfortunately, it is broken, but there are several PDF documents for getting you going. And one of the big things about CryEngine that sucked is their developer report, report was, sorry, their developer support was pretty terrible. Their documentation was pretty terrible. All of that stuff was pretty terrible. So hopefully under Amazon stewardship and with the source code being available, we'll see a lot of movement in this area. Uh, so it becomes a much friendlier, better supported game. And some of the major weaknesses are taken away. And today we're just gonna do a quick look around what you get in the tools. I'm actually gonna go ahead and open one of the samples that came with it. It's right here, basic animation sample. And ta-da. Now, as you can see, the editor is pretty typical of what you get in a modern day game editor, full WYSIWYG environment placement, etc. Oddly enough, there's full 3D modeling in here, including like edge loop creation, cut, magnet. Like, it's a very full capable 3D modeler in here, which I don't really understand because the majority of your assets are obviously going to be created in a content creation tool like uh, Max Maya, possibly Blender. Uh, so I don't really know why there is a modeler in here, but there there is. Uh, there's full terrain sculpting tools in here, um, etc. So here is a simple um, chicken scene. And basically, if I go ahead and run this, so we can do like a preview of the game by going to switch to game. Now the game is running. And then whenever I click the mouse, that animation plays. And that's it. That's basically all that there is for the sample. But it allows us to navigate around some of what is available. First off, you can see previews of your game rather easily uh, using the game menu there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select this chicken. I'm going to try to anyways. The selection options are a little wonky. Come on. All right. Come on, chicken. There we go. So you grab the chicken. It appears to be somewhat of a component-based system where we can have an entity and entities are built up of, say, animation objects like you've got here. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up FlowGraph. Now, FlowGraph is sort of like a less polished version of Blueprints from Unreal Engine 4. And this one's really zoomed out to start. But here you can see the script that is controlling our chicken. Now you don't have to program this way. There are three options when working in CryEngine. There is full Lua scripting, this flow graph support like so, and C++. So those are your various options. But as you can see, it's Typical flow chart. If you've used blueprints, this is immediately obvious to you, um, as is a lot of um, Construct2 takes this approach and a couple of other visual game engines take this approach. But as you see, you got the game start event kicks in. It's triggering off to a mouse button event. When a mouse button is pressed, it's firing this play animation event. And then when the animation is about done, it is firing this other play animation event. So you can see it's a very simple graph of events happening uh, with inputs and outputs, and that is one way to code in this engine. Now another way we've got, let's come down here, you can see there's edit script. And I don't know why the built-in editor doesn't automatically work, but as you can see, this code here, I think it's actually what is generated. I'm not positive on that one, but anyways, the code here that you see is Lua. And Lua is actually, I like Lua. Lua is a good, solid, comparable uh, or capable uh, programming language, especially for embedding in other engines. So Lua script is in there as well. And that is just sort of uh, the very, very small sequence of what is available from a programming point of view. And we're going to look through a couple of the other tools that are in here. So why does my brightness keep flicking on and off? You have a number of pieces built in. Now, I don't have a train going. And I'm going to mess everything up by doing so. But for example, I can bring in the train editor. And we can use a typical um, height graph approach. So I could go tools, generate train, and have it basically randomized. So I just created this random train. I imagine my chicken is now underwater. Like so. Oh, what have I done? Okay. Yeah, that definitely was not a good call. Let me see if I can do a control Z undo on that one. Well, anyways, that is the um, the train editor. You can use it to generate and manage and modify height maps. Uh, we've got various different options here. You can um, sculpt, raise, lower, texture, etc. your train in real time, no problems there. Uh, let's look at some of the other options available. Uh, you have database access, so you can go through all of the various files and uh, and assets attached to your scene. You've got a dialogue editor for doing um, exactly that, for talking, synchronizing audio, internationalization, etc. We've got, uh, there's the flow graphic to Geppetto, which is an animation system. So we can see here, for example, our chicken 
animation. We can uh, modify it and work with it here. Let me just bring it open. Come on, open chicken. Like so, so we can see our animations at work. So there's one animation. There's the idle animation. So it's an animation preview and setup kind of tool. Uh, let's see what else we got down here. Uh, particle editor, script editors, uh, terrain editor, we already saw, LOD generator, uh, flow graph, which is that uh, that we just saw a second ago for visual scripting. Um, a number of things, a, a UI editor for um, creating dialogues, etc. And that's about it. Now, I'm not going to go into a heck of a lot of detail. I mostly just wanted to show you uh, the tool, get a quick view. You can see what's available there. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to go into more in-depth coverage. At the very least, I'm going to probably do a closer look at this, spend some more time with it, get to know the tools, and give you guys a bit of more in-depth actual look at it. Uh, but also let me know if you're interested in seeing tutorials on this. If you want me to actually learn this to the point where I can do a tutorial series, uh, I'm interested in it. I like the fact that there's a Lua end and there's this visual scripting side of things and there's C++ on the other end. So I'm definitely willing to do a deeper dive if you guys are interested in learning more. But I figured I would get something out there so you could at least see what we were dealing with uh, with this brand new launch today. It's a, it's a very exciting thing to have. It's, it's nice to have another competitor to um, Unity and Unreal and a dozen others, but this is another like triple A level, especially as CryEngine seem to be falling off a bit. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, replacement. Now, if you are sitting there as a CryEngine developer and you're, you're basically doing the indie development through Steam, cancel it. You have absolutely no reason to go that road anymore as far as I can tell. The only thing I can think of is, first off, if you want to host your servers on uh, cloud other than Amazon for some reason, I suppose, then the you know, paying your subscription to CryEngine, I suppose, makes sense. But through this one, you are getting full source code, and that one you are not. This one, there is no cost. That one, there is obviously a monthly cost. So I see very little reason to continue down that path. Now, one thing that could be interesting, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but um, Amazon will have forked CryEngine as of the point that they acquired it way back. So they're going their own route with it. You can see, uh, for example, the menu now has uh, Amazon configuration and the console stuff. And, access to uh, S3, their storage solution, um, database solutions, etc., their new game lift service, uh, Twitch integration and such. They've already built this into their fork of it. So they're going to be divergent from this point on. And I'm not sure if they've got a perpetual license to all of what CryEngine works on or if it's going to be a separate engine from now on out. Uh, so there might be one reason to stick with CryEngine if you're with CryEngine because they are definitely different products, at least for now. So I'm not sure where that's going to turn out. Uh, so anyways, that was just a quick look at the Lumberyard game engine. Uh, hope it was of some interest to you. Of, to you sorry, I can't speak today. And uh, again, let me know if this is something you're interested in seeing more of, and I will definitely consider doing a tutorial series on it. See you later.